Has God been good to you? Are you grateful for his goodness? And you know, when you talk about his goodness, you know what shows up, right? His glory. Come on, when you talk about his goodness, his glory shows up. And that's not my subject tonight. Hallelujah. My subject, remember what we're talking on Wednesday night, we're ministering to you about the kingdom of God. And I think one of the things that's hard for me, and so I'm just going to tell you for me, and maybe it's not you, but for me, is I've really never seen uh, in the natural, I've never seen a kingdom work. Because everything we know about history when it comes to kingdom, how many of you know when there's a kingdom, there's a king, and there's a royal family? And they usually mess it up royally, <laughs> right? I mean, even our young history as a nation, we rebelled against a kingdom, right? And so you and I don't really understand much. And then, you know, with our Western mindset and not having much, you know, I, and I, I'll be real honest, you know, even, you know, uh, as Americans, uh, st- citizens of the United States, when they start doing that uh, princess and prince stuff over there across the pond, I'm like, I don't care about none of that. That doesn't have any effect on me. I don't want to hear nothing about it. I want to see it. You know, I, it just, I, you know, but in some ways, because we've not had a good visual, what had, what has happened is this. How many of you know the devil, and you and I should not underestimate him, is a master messer upper of things? Because in heaven, remember Jesus prayed, he said, Father, thy kingdom, thy will be done on as it is in. God doesn't have two wills. He doesn't have a will for heaven and a will for the earth. Now, what you have to understand is let's start with Adam and Eve. When God created Adam, when he formed Adam out of the dust of the earth and breathed the breath of life in him, he told, and then he took Eve out of his side for them to do what? To rule and reign together from the Garden of Eden. They were supposed to spread out and they were supposed to have dominion. And they were supposed to take authority and they were supposed to replenish the earth. And it was supposed to be God and sons. Adam was a son of God and, and, and not the only begotten son, but a created son. And so what was supposed to happen didn't happen because they were supposed to replenish. That's happened. Uh, we're 7.4. I think, I mean, it's happened and the replenishing happened, but it didn't happen the way God intended it to happen. Because along the way, remember, the serpent, the devil, came in and once again tried to mess with the kingdom of God. Let's rewind a little bit. Let's go to heaven and see what happened there. Remember, how many know in heaven, everything is perfect? Now listen to me. And although the devil is currently a defeated foe, he may be the God of this world, but how many know Jesus destroyed him? Right? But you still got to be aware of who he is. The Bible says, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. This cunning crafting being got one third, 33.33 ad nauseum percent to rebel against a perfect God in a perfect place. You ought not underestimate him messing in and uh, among this world system. You have an enemy. Now he's defeated, but then let's go. Now let's jump forward. We went from eons past. Now we're in the Garden of Eden. And now the serpent shows up. The devil shows up to do what? Not just to mess with Adam and Eve, but God's trying to create another kingdom. And the devil is a master. And what he wants to do, because he wanted to be like the Most High. Remember, God said, there is no other God. No, there's not anyone like me. I know not one. And you don't know one either. God's in a class all by himself. But the devil has made it his mission in his existence to do what? To overthrow the kingdom. To overthrow God. He tried in heaven, got a third of them to go. Bless their darling hearts and stupid heads or whatever they got. Not going to go well for them. Not going to go well. And then... God tried to do something here on the earth with Adam and Eve, created them, breathed of himself in there, in his likeness and in his image. And then the devil gets in there again and does what? He takes the kingdom that was supposed to be like heaven and he messes with it again. 
Okay, so then we jump forward and we've got all these years with even Jesus acknowledging when he came about the devil. Remember what he called him. He called him the prince of the power of the air. Second Corinthians four and four calls him little G. Nobody's like the big G. Called him the little G God of this world. So we see that, and remember in the temptation of Christ, you remember Jesus was baptized in the river of Jordan, spirit of God came on him, he was led into the wilderness, and who came into the wilderness? Who came into the wilderness? The devil. Why did the devil come in the wilderness? One of the temptations will tell you why the devil came into the, into the wilderness. Because the devil knows somebody's back to try to rearrange this kingdom thing that I've got under control. And one of the temptations was, we're not going to take time to look at it. We did last time. We may jump maybe in tonight some a little bit. Remember, what did the devil say? All these kingdoms, he took him up to the high mountain, right? All these kingdoms have been delivered unto me. It wouldn't be a real temptation if it weren't true. Because he knows this Jesus who he sees the Spirit of God on, who he tried to kill when he was a baby, who's undoing his work everywhere, who's, Jesus is undoing the work of the devil, ever, who God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because of a, a kingdom at work. And so Jesus is doing what? He's messing with the kingdom. He's prayed, Father, your will be done. Thy kingdom come. And he's hurt. And, and, and so Jesus is about to go do something. And so what's the devil do? One of the first things the devil says, all these have been delivered unto me. If you'll just become the first Satan worshiper. That's what he said. If you'll bow down and worship me, I'll put you right under me. And all this will be yours. Take my, Pastor Rhonda calls it the, the shortcuts in life are not always the best. Because, you know, how many of you know none of us really like the long way? Or we don't like it the hard way. But Jesus, he came to put the kingdom back together. And the devil, one of the main temptations was, if you'll just bow down and worship me, I'll give it all to you. I'll put you right under me. But I still want to be in charge. And Jesus said, you better get that mess up out of here. That's what he said. New modern translation, but that's what he said. And so we want to talk tonight because I want you to understand. So when we look at things as far as a kingdom, how many of you know it's a election season? Did you know that? Praise Jesus. And so, um, so you and I are kind of focused in on how it all works. I remember the Lord one time many years ago, I was praying, he said, uh, he said, you do know how your, your system works, right? It's like they elect. How you know we live in a democracy, but it's not really a democracy, it's a republic, right? And so there's democracies all over. There's all kinds of ways to do government. Um, and um, yet my point in telling you where we started, and I want to tell you again, you and I don't really have a good picture of the kingdom. The Lord's always tried to paint pictures for us. For instance, in Ephesians 5, it says that um, marriage is supposed to be a covenant example of what? Christ in the church. What has the devil done? He's messed it up so much in so many ways. He's trying to mess with the picture. And that's what he's done with the kingdom of God. He has so messed with the picture that you and I who love Jesus, we can't see it like we ought to see it. And I believe the Lord, when I was away praying, he was really dealing with me. He's like, this is really, really important. And I was like, this is really, really out of my comfort zone. And so he's really having to share with me some things. And so I'm having a lot of fun learning some things. And I'm sure, you know... Um, as I go, there's things, and I'm sure other people have taught on this, and it's good. And I realize with anything, you can um, go overboard, 
uh, or underboard. <laughs> you can either go too far to one way or the other. So we're going to try to stick with the word and go right down the middle and learn what the Holy Ghost has for us. So I want you to understand, I get it because even from my perspective, I've never seen this in the natural because the only thing of the kingdoms we've ever seen is it messed up. We've seen bad king, <laughs> bad king, <clears throat> um, bad queens, bad royal families. But there is a kingdom that is pure. There is a kingdom that everything is done just right. There is a kingdom that there is a throne in heaven that nothing bad has ever come from that. It's always good. And so we can trust that kingdom. And then you've got to understand, what was God's purpose for earth? There was supposed to be a kingdom here that reflected the kingdom there. Even in the old covenant, remember, when he, he was always trying to get someone to work with him directly so he could start a family and have somebody here on the earth. E even, uh, I got so much. E I, got, I got like 60 scriptures and I haven't gotten to one of them yet. Uh, I, seriously, Sandra can vouch for it. I got lots of them. And, and um, so, like, but even how God wanted to work through families. I mean, you know, we are blessed today through a family. The family of Abraham. God's always wanted, and even out of that family came Jesus. He likes family. He likes family. He always wanted a family. That's why he gets so irritated when people try to make this a religion. Because it's always meant to be a family. And, 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 and he wanted everybody in the family, so he sent his son so you and I could be adopted with full rights and privileges. But it's a royal family. We're part of a royal priesthood, a holy nation. But you got to come at this understanding that it's all supposed to be about a kingdom. Now, right after Jesus got baptized and the Holy Ghost went into the desert and the, the wilderness, and there the enemy came and tempted him, right after that, if you'll study this, right after that, Jesus came out preaching. But he came out preaching. His main message was the kingdom of God is at hand. Why? Because I'm here. The king, that is his, one of his main messages was the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is here. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. Why? Because the king's here. And he wanted to rearrange things. So let's look at Jesus. You can't have a kingdom without a king. So we're going to honor the king tonight. I want to talk about the king for, for the rest of the time. I'm not talking about Elvis. I'm talking about the real king. Okay, I'm talking about the real king. All right, his name is Jesus. Everybody say, King Jesus. King Jesus. That has a nice ring to it. He is Savior. He is Lord. He is healer. But he is the king. In Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33, the Bible says this, Of his kingdom... There shall be no end. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 2, Matthew chapter 1, verse 2, the word of God calls him. Okay, so I wrote it down. Sorry, sorry, Sandra. Uh, he is the king of the Jews. Mark 15, verse 32, I believe, says he's the king of Israel. I just want to show you some things. And then in 1 Timothy. 6, 15, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. Is, the king. is the king. He's the king. He's the king. Revelations 19, 16, this is familiar to us. And he hath on his vesture. I don't know what he's doing with his name on his thigh. <clears throat> King of kings and Lord of lords. Everybody say, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. 
In other words, what I'm trying to get you to do tonight, I, I want you, I know you know he's the king. I know, yet we mostly think of Savior, Lord, Healer, Provider. The reason I'm going through this and it's slow, A, the Lord told me to. B, I feel like I'm supposed to put a foundation in you. And what I'm trying to do, too, is get you to think and act and talk different. Because you ain't from here. You're an ambassador from somewhere. Once you got born, we, we are so natural. Uh, the Bible uses the word you and I don't like, carnal. We are so uh, mere men, yet we're not. But what you think, what you know, what revelation you have can hold you into an arena that you were born again for far higher and far better. And if we would ever learn who Jesus the King is and then what that's done for us, we begin to fix up this place. Come on. Y'all know, like, I, I love to watch shows where they take an old car and put it back to its natural beauty. I also like to do that when houses. I like these things. Um, there's a couple ladies uh, that I like to watch up in, because I'm from, uh, from around there, Indianapolis. Um, uh, I, you know, um, I don't remember what they call it, but the, their business title is like uh, Two Chicks and a Hammer. I don't know what it is, but it's a mom-daughter. But what they do is they go into a neighborhood They'll buy into a neighborhood, and then they'll work the neighborhood. Come on, the Lord needs somebody in here who will sign up for the kingdom and begin to work the neighborhood. Because he really does want us to get an understanding of, you and I were set here to make a difference in this realm, and the only way this realm is going to change if we start working from that realm, which is more real than this realm. But we are so stuck in this realm and so reactive to this realm that we don't even understand we are kings, that, that we are of royal family. Come on, you, you ain't from here. You're from somewhere else. Once you get born again, you change kingdoms. That's why there's a kingdom of darkness and a kingdom of light. There's the kingdom of the devil and there's a kingdom of his dear son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the king who actually sits on a throne. He is the king. He's the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. Come on. He's the only. I love that one. I'm going to say it again. He's the only potentate. I like it. I like he, he, he. Come on. When I think of potentate, I think somebody who's potent. I think of somebody who rules. He's the only potentate, the king of kings and the Lord of, I just like it. Hallelujah. And he, he even so sure of himself. I, I don't know. I don't want to start nothing, but he got something on his th thigh. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's inked. I don't know. I, I ain't got none. I don't recommend it, but I'm just saying he's, he's, he's so sure of it. He got it written. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. Everybody say Jesus is the king. And, and so when you know that Jesus, it's not just a song, it's not just a saying, he's the king of something. He's the king of something. And when we understand who the, he's the king of something, and he is your king, with that should come a whole lot more respect, a whole lot more honor, and if we understand it, because see, we've been so dumbed down. L listen, when it comes to governments, th there's not any on the earth. We think sometimes we think this one's the best. But how many of you know how this one works? Uh, the majority, because you, and you know the majority's always right, don't you? And I'm not anti government. Uh, I believe we're here and we need to affect things. Amen. I do believe we need, we definitely need to affect things. We need to affect laws. We need to help the people. We need to help people. But you got to understand that it's, but we're looking at things and the Lord could never get anybody. Even Israel, when he tried to get them, he wanted to be their king. And they said, no, we want a king we can see. And that never worked out good for him. Because there were some good ones and there were some bad ones. But he's always good. And so in our mind, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I got so much to tell you. Um, 
They can't even, people can't even get church governments right. How many different church governments are there? As many churches as there are. I mean, you got demon deacon boards. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't have any demon deacons around here. I got good deacons, but they're not a board. They're not a board. They don't represent the people to me. They represent me to the people. I don't know that we got everything right around here. I just know is, see, you can't, even in God's earthly organization, you can't get, you can't get nothing right. Because we're looking at how the world looks at it. So they begin to even govern church like they govern the world. Why is there demon, I mean, deacon boards? I gotta get, why are, that was actually a mistake, I promise. Why are there deacon boards? Because if the pastor ever gets out of order, or if he or she, the pastor ever messes up, we need to be able to get rid of them. We need to be able to correct them. Because how I many you know there are bad pastors? There are, there have been, and there will be again. I, I think you've got an okay one, and if he does something wrong, you're, don't, the pastor's wife, she'll fix him, all right? I'm just telling you. And we have boards here. We have boards here. Uh, we have a, you know, all I'm saying is the reason we can't seem to get a grasp on kingdom is because we don't see it in the church. We don't see it in governments. We don't see it. And even though the Lord has always tried to, he uses farming and seeds and fruit trees. What? He always wants us to have something to look at. But in this case, we really have had nothing in history that's right. And so we're not just looking in a mirror darkly. We're looking at a mirror darkly, broken, no good. And so he needs us to be able to see it just from the realm of the spirit. And so that's why we're breaking this down. So if you're going to have a kingdom, you've got to start with a king. And his name is Jesus. And he's not just the king, he's my king. He's my king. In John chapter 1, verse 49, you see uh, Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to thee, I saw you under the fig tree, you believe, you shall see greater things than this. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter you'll see the uh, heaven open, and angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. But he had Nathaniel, had a revelation, he's the king of Israel. And then, um, y'all, you all know about Christmas time, you've seen uh, all the things. You remember, we three kings, uh, you remember that one? Matthew chapter, um, um, I'm really writing down some, okay, let's see if I got this one right. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men, kings, from the east into Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? So I, I, just, want to, I, I just want to put this really solid. Nathaniel, Revelation, you're the king of Israel. Three kings from the east, sees, they see a star. They come to honor the king of Israel. They come to honor the king of Israel. You go later, uh, Acts chapter um, 17. Never really seen this one before. Acts chapter 17. Uh, Paul's in Corinth. And there he found, uh, finds um, Aquila um, and Priscilla. And because they're all tent makers, they were all together. And he reasoned the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews. And verse 5, And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was present in spirit and testified the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he took his... Um, you know, this is really good. I don't know why today I had trouble writing some things down. Because um, I'm reading the wrong chapter. All right. That was all good. Um, so um, Paul's in the, <laughs> Acts chapter 17, 1 through 9. We need something red up there, Sandra, when I'm going the wrong direction. All right. Uh, Acts 17. Um, so um, there's a man named Jason. Verse 6, when they found them not, they drew Jason, a certain brethren, into the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down have come hither also. 
whom Jason had received. He'd received Jesus. And they all do contrary do the decrees of Caesar saying that there is another king. There's another king, one Jesus. And it troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and the others, they let them go. So Jason, this guy who's obviously important in the city, gets born again. And he starts saying, there's another king. There's another king. My point in saying all this is, you and I have got to start acting like there's another king. And not just in church. There's another king. He's real. From a real place. I know him. He's my savior. He's the Lord of my life. He's my elder brother. But he's also my king. A real king. From a real place. And Jason had that revelation. Nathaniel had that revelation. Others have that revelation. Everybody say, Jesus is king. Now, one of the things they tried to do, and uh, I was down there, and, you know, if you don't know my prayer life, sometimes me and the Lord while I'm praying, sometimes even when I'm in deep, um, he'll say something, and I'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And because uh, he, he just does that with me. I'm like, what are you saying? And um, um, uh, we, I was praying along some lines uh, about, you know, things coming up and things around and about this subject. And uh, the Lord spoke to me. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, they've always tried to get me to fix their governments. Now, how many of you know the Lord will get in the middle of anything you ask him to? Okay. How many of you know, there, please don't put this around. Pastor Mark is not anti-government. I'm not. Um, I'm just not probably your ordinary preacher these days. Um. And how the Lord is dealing with me may not be how he's dealing with anybody else. But I have to do what he's dealing with me about. And I have to pastor the church that he gave me and the people that he gave me. And so if you're here and if you're listening, if you're part of me, then listen up. Because I believe God has some things for us to do that if we'll do from the realm of the spirit in his order, in his way, that it'll affect great change. Amen. And so it starts with, we come from a kingdom. God's always tried to get a kingdom here on the earth that looks like heaven. And it looks like in past history that he failed. But how many know God never fails and cannot fail? So if it looks like it over and it looks like it's not working, all we got to do is what? Wait just a second. Wait just a minute because he's got a plan. And it's not plan B, it's always plan A. Because right when Adam and Eve fell, he's like, I'm going to send a redeemer. Amen. He's got a way to do this. So the Lord, you know, was kind of saying, he's like, they've always wanted me to fix their government. Or, because when, remember, um, is, it, is Isaiah 9, 6. Let's put up that one. Isaiah 9, 6. Let's go there first. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his... Now, see, when they saw Isaiah prophesy this, and they, was in, they were in the middle of a current mess because they were under Roman rule... And they were being mistreated. And they were being used and abused. What did they ask him? What did they, what did they want Jesus to do? Let's look at John 6. Uh, let's, see, let's see if I can, got the right. Um, <laughs> I got so much scripture. Verse 15 of John 6. When... Jesus, therefore, perceived that they would come and take him by force to do what? Why? Because I got something right now I need you to fix right now. You can talk about all this kingdom coming stuff you want to, but I need you to fix this now. And so you're going to be the king now. The Bible says the government is supposed to be on your shoulders. So let's, let, come on, Jesus. And they were so insistent that they were going to, by force, make him the king. Because it's a mess down here. It's a mess here right now. We're not supposed to be living like this. Now, <laughs> you're going to be king, and you're going to be king right now. 
whether you want to or not. And remember, he had to slip away. Even after he was raised from the dead, y'all with me? Acts chapter 1. How many know Jesus raised from the dead? He's got things to talk about. And remember, at one place I already showed you last week that after he was raised from the dead, he's still talking kingdom. Why was he still talking kingdom? Because they didn't get it yet. They didn't really understand what was supposed to happen. And I don't know as a whole, we in the church understand what's supposed to happen, what's supposed to have happened, and what we're supposed to be acting like. So Acts chapter 1, but are you all ready to learn? You all ready to do this? And we're going to stick just with the word. We're not going to add anything. Acts 1, 6. It says, when they, when they therefore were come together, remember Jesus is talking to them about being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's what he wants to talk about. And they were all come together and they asked him and said, Lord, when are you going to restore the kingdom? When are you going to fix the government? And he had to say, well, it's not for you to know. <laughs> The times of the season, which the Father has put in his own power. So even if they were like, come on, can you can, give us the relief right now? So Jesus didn't say no, just like the Lord didn't tell Paul, you know, just, just do, you know, too bad, so sad. He said, my grace is sufficient. God's got a plan. So what is his plan? Y- y'all, y'all good? So let's go. Okay, so everybody say Jesus is king. Is he your king? Yes. He absolutely is. He's the king of a kingdom and the kingdom is from heaven and God the almighty has a son who he wanted to be our king and yet the earth was supposed to be a reflection of the kingdom of heaven y'all, y'all with me I know this might be like a little meaty but but you can handle it and it's important and I'm trying to break it down and make it simple but and and you say well you know, or, okay, get some more stuff. But see, you've got to get a real foundation here because I really don't believe we as the whole, as the body of Christ, understand kingdom principles. Because, see, if you really did, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things would just be added unto you because you're a king's kid. But the reason these things aren't running us down is because we don't understand the kingdom nor his righteousness. We don't understand how the kingdom works. Because it doesn't work like democracy. It works like nothing you and I have ever seen. But it's seen here. And he came preaching the kingdom. In other words, he's trying to tell all the folks that were alive then, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The way things were supposed to be from the beginning, I've come to bring back to you. I've come to tell you there's another place, a real place, where I'm from, and really where you were supposed to be from. Because the breath of God went into a man who was created in the likeness and the image of God. There is a reason that humanity hates to be enslaved. Because you and I were never ordained to be under. We were always ordained to be over. It's a curse to be under. You're the head, not the tail. You're above, never beneath. It's who you are. It's not who you're trying to be. It's who you are. No, if you're born again, you're not like a a person who is not born again. They're living in darkness in a kingdom that you came out of with a different nature. When you got born again, you got a new nature. The blood, so to speak, of the king runs through you. You've been bought with precious blood. You've been redeemed and you've been moved from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. There's something in every born again. Oh, I wish I could get you in this. There's something about every born again believer because we're supposed to be ruling and reigning in this life by one Jesus Christ. The reason, I'm getting way ahead of myself. This is probably lesson four or five. But the reason that he's the king of kings is you're supposed to be acting like a king. 
You're not supposed to be acting like you don't got it. You're supposed to be acting like you do got it and understand it. When something doesn't work out, you're supposed to be going, hmm, why didn't that work out? I'm a king. Why didn't I work out? I'm the head, not the tail. Quit trying to get what you already got. Just take it. It's yours in the realm of spirit. Now, I don't, I don't say go take up, you know, I didn't talk about no going to, hey, this bank, go to the bank. Hey, this money's mine. Pastor Mark says it's mine. No, that's not what I said. That is not what I said. Okay, let's, go walk, let's walk with Jesus a little bit. He's, uh, let's start on the road to his crucifixion. We know he's been here on the earth talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven, heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. He's prayed, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done. He's passed through a temptation. He's met with the enemy who has always tried to subvert the kingdom of God while he was in heaven. Adam and Eve, the devil, messed with it. Um, he, all throughout time, uh, you don't see too much um, from Adam and Eve until Jesus comes to the devil. But you can see the enemy at work. There's, there's all kinds of things going on all the time. So God tries to make a covenant. He does make a covenant with a man, tries to pull them out from humanity again. He tries to save Noah, uh, a covenant, start there. So God's, one of the things you should see from that is God's always trying to raise up a covenant family. It's no mistake that, that God chose Noah a family. He wants a family. And anytime the family fights, the devil is thrilled. thrilled. He loves to divide and conquer. And if you don't think he's smart enough to do it, if he can pull one third of a created being who's done nothing but serve the almighty for eons to take a man and woman created in the likeness and image of God and, and mess with them to the point that they disobey. Just one thing. But we have a hero. The perfect one. The spotless lamb. The king potentate. We ain't messing. We ain't messing. We're sending the best. We're sending the only begotten. And the only begotten knows what he's doing. And this time when the devil come, this time when the devil comes trying to subvert the kingdom of God again, no, not this time. But you have to see this kingdom stuff. I'm so excited about this. So you can look there. Let's look at Matthew 21. Um, I've got, you know what, Sandra, uh, let's do Joshua 12 instead. I mean, not Joshua, John 12. John 12, John 12. Work with me. John 12, 12. The next day, much of the people who were coming to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, verse 13, took branches of palm trees. Y'all know where we're at right now, right? And when they went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, which is what we focus on, but what is the rest of it? Blessed is the king of Israel. So the people, not worked up, on their own, they're realizing something by what Jesus is doing. Because what is he preaching? The kingdom of God is at hand. The, the kingdom of heaven is here. So they had to figure it out. If the kingdom of heaven is at hand and the kingdom of God is at hand, he must be the king. He must be the king. And so they begin to honor him on the earth as king. And I want to believe this. I'm thinking this too. The more the people begin to understand the kingdom, the more of the kingdom from heaven began to work on the earth. Not just Jesus um, was because he's the son of God, but because he was preaching kingdom, the things of the kingdom, which how many of y'all would agree, there's no sickness. Come on, multiplication of food would not be a big thing for the king. The kingdom began to work, and so they began then to honor him as king. Blessed is the king. Everybody say, blessed is the king. Blessed is the king of Israel that comes in the name of the Lord. Verse 14. Or am I done? Now keep going. And Jesus, when he found the young ass, set there on and written, then verse 15. 
Verse 15. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, the king comes. He's here. It was prophesied. Here's the king. The king is here. And then let's look at John 18, verse 36. Jesus answered. So, this, so, we're, so we, we've worked our way. He's passed the temptation. He's preached the kingdom. Preached the kingdom. Kingdom of heaven in hand. Uh, he, they are, they're getting the fact that he's the king. Everybody shout King Jesus. <laughs> Everybody's getting the fact he is the king. He is the, they begin to honor him as king. And then now Jesus is being crucified. Jesus answered, my kingdom, this is important. My kingdom, they don't all get this yet, but my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, uh, my servants would fight you. And he could have added it and make no mistake. Because later he tells us he could have called somebody from his kingdom. And just one of them could have knocked out, oh, maybe 10,000 of those. Make no mistake, this king has an army. They're the two-thirds that are left, but they ain't sissy angels. Those little cute figurine ones. That's not who, that's not who watches out over me. If I were of this world, my servants would fight that I should not be delivered into the hands of the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from here. So y'all kind of getting it, but you're not getting it. My kingdom's not from here. My kingdom's not from here. They wanted to make his kingdom from here right then, right now. But if he'd have done that, it had been a temporary fix when he's trying to make an eternal fix. They wanted a limited fix. We, we humans, we, we earthlings, we, and I get it. How many of you want, when things are wrong, you want it fixed? I, I know, I know. If you hang with me, you know I like things fixed. I like things done. Um, but that's what they were doing. They were really short-sighted. They wanted uh, temporary relief when Jesus was trying to give an eternal answer. And it's all about a kingdom and a king. And, uh, I mean, this king thing is really important. Um, let's look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 11. I believe this is where we got Pilate. Matthew 27, 11. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you really the king of the Jews? And Jesus said it to him, you say. That's what you say. You saying that? You say it. In other words, you're right. You're right. But he doesn't say you're right. He's like, I like King James here. Thou sayest? Are you the king of the Jews? And listen, this is not to be overlooked. How many of you know um, when, when you, Bible interpretation, when something is in all four gospels, because the Gospel of John is usually very different and a very different perspective. But when it's in all four Gospels, you were supposed to get this. And this is in all four Gospels. It's in Mark 15, 2, I believe. Luke 23, 2 through 3. And John 18, 33. This is in all four Gospels. Him asking. Pilate asking. Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and said, are you the king of the Jews? He wanted him to answer, are you the king of the Jews? And what would he answer? Thou sayest. Why is that important? Because you're supposed to see this conflict between an earthly king and a heavenly king. They can only see an earthly king. You and I because of what Jesus did, we have a heavenly king from a heavenly kingdom that 
is finally able. He's always been able. For 2,000 years, he's been able. But I don't know that he's ever really been able because there's not been the revelation that's necessary for a group of people to rise up within a kingdom and rule and reign from the realm of the Spirit that will affect so much change in the natural. That's why the earth, I truly believe, groans for the revealing. and The, of, the Bible says that... Because there's going to be some things happen in these last days before the king potentate. <laughs> That's my new thing with him. I'm going to start calling him potentate. When he splits the sky, and that's not a fairy tale, that's going to happen. And they will all bow down and worship him as king. But you and I have an opportunity to understand the king right now, right now, right now. Um, whew, are you the king? He said, you say this. Let me see about this, this scripture. Again, I was writing so many scriptures down because I just want to give you a full what the Bible is because there's so much about it. Mark chapter 15. Um, okay, here's something. Here's something. Now we got Pilate. And remember the whole deal of, who, do you want me to, I'm going to release somebody. And remember, was it Pilate's wife? Who, who was, the, I can't remember right off hand. But one of the wives, she like, I've been having some dreams and you need not mess, don't, don't you be messing. And he was trying to wash his hands of it. He didn't want his blood on his hands. And, and so he went to the, because it was Passover. So now, you know, you can, we can release someone after the image of Passover. And so he's trying to talk to, the other day they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name, he's the king, he's the king. And now these group of people, we can all be so fickle. Mark 15, 9, um, but Pilate answered them and saying, because they were like they were telling him, you know, Jesus is part of an insurrection. Uh, the multitude crying began to desire to him. Uh, uh, he said, verse nine. But Pilate answered them saying, Would you that I would release to you the King of the Jews? Verse twelve. And Pilate answered again and said to them, Will will you that I I shall do unto him whom you call the King of the Jews? Verse thirteen. And they cried out. Crucify him. Pilate said, what, what did he do? And they cried out, crucify him. Crucify him. Yesterday, they're saying, hail king of the Jews. Hosanna. Today, they yell, crucify. And so, again, then, in Mark, um, let's just, I want to get to this one, and I may, I may uh, pull back around next Wednesday on this. But this thing about Jesus the King, he came preaching the kingdom of heaven. He came preaching the kingdom of God. They begin to recognize he is the king, and they begin to honor him as the king. And I believe kingdom things really start working. Uh, he's praying. Uh, he, he, and he, he taught them to pray, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's about getting God's kingdom working here on the earth like it was always supposed to work. And so in order for that to happen, he's got to send the king. He's got to send him to the earth. And so the king, the, few, the king has to mess with the one who has always opposed this kingdom, the devil. And he destroyed him and he defeated him. But along the way, then the people, they wanted him to be a natural king. And now that he's not going to be a natural king, they don't want anything to do with him. And they begin to mock him. And, um, you know, Matthew 27, we'll just read that one. Matthew 27, 27 through 30. And they spit, him on, they spit upon him. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the bands of soldiers. Verse 28. And they stripped him and put uh, on him a scarlet robe. Verse 29. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put on his head and a reed in his right hand. 
And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. This is not an accident. Inspired by the devil to mock the real king. To make people dismiss him as the king. To mock him. And they spit on him, took the reed, and smote him in the head. You can find other things. Um... I can't, I, 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 gotta, I gotta at least get you here. So then at the crucifixion, uh, John chapter 19, again, this one I'm about to read is in all four gospels. John chapter 19, 19 through 22. So we got Pilate, remember, what does he do? He makes a, a sign. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, right over Jesus, what he put. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And remember what the people, the religious people said. What did they want? They did not want that. Because what did they say? We have only one king, and his name is Caesar. The the confrontation over king. Because the confrontation is over the kingdom. I really believe the devil knows what's at stake here. It's not just about you being saved. Are you glad you're saved? It's not just about you being healed. Are you glad you're healed? It's not just about you being blessed. You glad you're blessed? But the whole thing was those that have preached turning the world upside down, or we might say, let's get this thing right finally. Because from the beginning of time, there's always supposed to be a kingdom. And it's supposed to be a reflection of heaven. And the devil fights it morning, noon, and night. But at the crucifixion, you see even him writing, he's the king of the Jews. And they want to say, no, you write, uh, you say it's the king of the Jews, not he's the king of the Jews. Because we only got one king, his name is Caesar. It's the fight again over Jesus being the king, but not the king. But let's just get here. And we might circle back around with some of this stuff. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 1. I'm not going to keep you much longer. Hebrews chapter 1. Let's just read, let's some, let's read some things about the potentate. Hebrews 1, 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So the king got up out of the grave. The king has been raised from the dead. The king puts his blood on the mercy seat. The king then takes what is rightfully his and he sits down at the right hand of Almighty God on the throne where he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And his kingdom, with his kingdom, I'm going to jump ahead, there shall be no end. There shall be... There shall be no end. You see, we're supposed to be ruling and reigning in a kingdom right now with them. There's no end. We're supposed to be ruling and reigning. There's a kingdom. There's a king right now. And you and I I get a little fit every now and again. But I'm telling you, there's a kingdom. And and then Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, which is familiar uh, uh, scripture to all of you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Who sits on a throne? A king. In Psalms 24, he's called the king of glory. He's called the king. Who is the king in glory? Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. It's talking about Jesus. First Timothy uh, 6.15. 1 Timothy 6.15. We're going to have to go over these again. I'm going too fast. 1 Timothy 6.15. By in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only. Let's do it again. I want to to finish. I'm telling you, I'm on this word. Potentate, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And again, in Revelation 19, 16, it it was written on his thigh and on his vesture, king of kings and Lord of lords. Revelation 11, 15 says his kingdom is forever. Okay, I just had to hurry up there at the end. We'll, we'll swing back around next Wednesday and we'll pick up some of these things. I hope you're getting this. I'm trying to put it in tonight is there's a king. And he's your king. And he's from a real place. And he came to this earth to change things. To put it back the way the father had originally wanted. And he just didn't leave us out. 
You aren't just supposed to go to heaven someday. You are going to heaven someday, right? Ooh, won't the kingdom up there be great? Yeah, but see, you're not supposed to be surprised when you get there. You're not supposed to be surprised how it works up there. How everybody's in unity in one accord. How it's full of mansions. And nobody's ever... You're not supposed to be surprised. You're supposed to be accustomed to it. And the only way you can get accustomed to it is to understand who the king is. And that you're part of a kingdom. And your function in the kingdom. And what the kingdom is supposed to look like. And then if you and I can really ever get there... And even if we get a little bit of revelation, it's going to change how you live. It's going to change how you talk. It's going to change how you see things. Uh, It's going to change when when you say, I'm an ambassador. Because, oh, it's a nice little title. We're ambassadors for Christ. But you really are an ambassador from a real kingdom. With real privileges. Real rights. (laughs) A real title, a real honor. And you're supposed to be making a change. An ambassador represents where they're from. And, and I don't know. I think we've done okay. But how I many know okay is not good? I think the Lord is trying to kick it up a little bit and really get us to represent him the way he wants to be represented. When Jesus preached the kingdom, there wasn't very many sick people around him who ever would believe. They didn't lack for food even when they didn't have any. Even the dead were raised. And his main message was the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There are other things he did, and and I'm not excluding those. But I think for us right now, I just really want to get this to you. I I think you can see I'm, I'm, I'm a tad bit excited about this. I'm a tad bit excited about getting you revelation, getting me further revelation of what it's like to operate in the kingdom with a king who wants to put some things right side up. And he needs some people who understand they're from the kingdom and how the kingdom works. I believe that's us. And I believe that's for today. And I believe we need to to giddy up a little bit and get some of these things. So believe God with me for further and greater revelation. And help me get it to you. And um, I believe, I believe we're, on, we're on a path. I don't know how long this little path is going to take, but I believe it's good. Amen? Amen? Thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for, for coming with us to church tonight. Uh, we'll see you Sunday morning, either at 8.30 or 11. God bless you all. We'll see you next time.